Hello everyone, I'm D-Mind, the mind of one and all, and welcome back to another episode of Memo. Alright, so, in the last episode, we kind of entered the school festival. Hmm, kind of soon since we joined school. Yeah, and now we are going to see Liz's play. Hmm, alright, this could be interesting. Kazumi! A familiar voice calls from nearby. Lizzie, that was great! What was great? Thanks. Kazumi throws her arms around Liz openly. I see that it catches Liz by surprise as her cheeks flush. Good job. Why? Why are you look? Why you always give me that look? Ah, she's always the Sundere. Up to the very end. Well, it's not the end yet. In fact, I do not know how long this game is. Actually, I thought it's gonna be short. In fact, I do know it's gonna be short, but. Whether it's 1 hour, 2 hours short, or 3 to 4 hours short, I do not know. It could be ending soon, or it could still go on for another hour so far, as far as I know. I just know that it's short. As for an hour, nope, I, will, I didn't even know. Alright. Liz, Liz glances at Kazumi, and and I with a suspicious expression as if we are in cahoots with something. It really was a nice play. We saw her play? Since when? I guess we skipped it. Aww. Would be nice if you should just show some CG or drew some CG or something. Oh well. Thank you. Somehow that seems forced. Anytime. What do you guys think of the play? It was awesome, Lizzie. Uh, I wouldn't know. It was fairly good. I'm fairly surprised to find out that she had that much talent. Yeah, it was good. I need to play it down, Seiji. It was really good. He even told me that you did a great job when you were performing. And she's popping. Blushing. He was probably lying. Wonderful, I can only dig myself into a deeper hole with compliments. <laughs> uh, no matter what you say to a it will always be like that. But that's actually a good thing. Because she blushed. Apparently. Well, closing the curtains was in your best act, but the rest was good. I might as well enjoy digging myself deeper. <laughs> oh wow. What was with you closing the curtains? Well, they needed someone and I want- Wait. Well, they needed someone and I wanted to do something without stressing over my lines. Makes sense. Sort of. Tell me something that I don't understand. Why did the king- Alright. As they talk, I try and think of something to say that wouldn't get me into trouble. Nothing was this complicated at the past few schools. High school is so annoying. Seji! I'm not back to reality as Kazumi's voice cuts through my thoughts. Oh, what is this? Emotional music playing suddenly. Yes? Have you been paying attention at all? Before I can even think to respond, Lizzie interjects. Of course not, he was sitting there with a dopey look on his face. I don't think I was. Anyways, Lizzie asked you what you liked the most. Since when did Kazumi become a mediator? Um, the part where she takes you on the show. Haha, <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. But I had no lines. You... You... You close-lined them, him though. Uh, Seiji? What is with you and violence? Me? You're always kicking that kid with the glasses. Seiji and Lizzie! What's wrong? What? Lizzie, you asked and he answered. But... What's wrong? And you, Seiji, just because she's complaining, that's no reason to go and make the situation worse. Oh, I see. Fine. Still, she still deserved it. Lizzie, do you want to go somewhere to eat later? Sure. Kazumi looks in my direction. Do you want to join? Uh, me? Think of it as repay as a repayment for the festival. Alright then. The whole day has been rather tiring and for all of the fuss, I barely saw anything. Glancing around as Lizzie and Kazumi continue to talk, I spot a very familiar looking woman. I look back at Kazumi and then at the lady. The teacher? Like, who else could it be? Her light-hearted demeanor and facial features are quite similar to the to that wandering person. 
What? Hey, Kazumi, there's someone who looks like you, her mother. I point in the direction of her carbon double and Kazumi whirls around to follow where I'm pointing. Oh, sister. M mom Alright, it's your mom. I barely catch Kazumi's whisper as she turns back around. We need to go back. What? Kazumi grabs my hand and starts pulling me along towards the cafe. Wow. The death grip slowly crushing my hand as I am pulled along encourages me to think of nothing except about when the pain will end. When we finally reach the room, Kazumi lets go of my hand. What's this in all this? Panting a little, I slowly regain my breath and feeling soon returns to my hand in the form of pins and needles. Aren't you glad you were on the track team? Haha. <laughs> I'm sure it helped. I flex my hand and looked around. We are one person short. Yes, where's Liz? Listening at the door, I can't hear any footsteps sitting in our direction either. We lost Lizzie. Oh, that's no good. That's not good. I don't know why she didn't follow us. She probably didn't want to be around me. It looked like she had a problem with me eating with you guys too. Kazumi looks like she's lost in thought as she regains her breath. Eh? Maybe it's because you didn't thank her for getting you a drink. Ah, that's right. I woke up right before she left. But you did thank her before she left. Remember? You said thanks and she was like, no, no problem and she blushed and ran out. I was barely able to think then though. I suppose I should have done that when I got the chance, but it never occurred to me. You did thank her, didn't you? This isn't going to fix itself. And how, why would that be the main reason why she didn't want to follow me? Oh, you didn't thank me for the drink. So I'm not going to follow you. I can't even eat with you. I'm not comfortable with you anymore. Seriously? Since your problem with me might be my fault, I may as well do something. I think the main problem here is that, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, she's our childhood friend. Cause she's the one that called us out in the train. Yeah, so she's that childhood friend that we're dreaming about. And because we've forgotten, but she remembered, so she's a bit mad. I should probably go after her. I think that would be the best thing to do. To do too. I'll help you out. Your mom's out there though. You might as well go see her. Her countenance changes as Kajimi looks like she's about to fight back. Yeah, watch out for her mom. What's the deal? Alright, I'll leave it to you. Just make sure she's alright. Kawajimi starts to leave the room but she turns around and stares at me levelly. And don't forget to thank her for going into the teacher's lounge, not just the drink. Most of the visitors have left already. Oh, so she went to the teacher's lounge for the drink. You know, since this is a school festival, I'm sure you can get drinks and like there are plenty of places that sell snacks and drinks. Right? You could get a drink not only from a vending machine, I don't know. Most of the visitors at left already have been searching for Liz for the last 20 minutes. Where on earth is she? I put your half open door at the end of the hallway. I've been looking for you. Oh, it's the dance ass again. I'm not Lizzie, maybe you need your you need new glasses. That's not it. I know that you two are getting together. If you don't hear much, then why she run away? Look, I don't have time for this. I actually need to find her. Not if I can help it. Ugh, this guy's annoying. Ah, here we go. I'm not in the mood to play these games. Even if you're not going out with her, I can't forgive you for making her sad. I made her sad? I can't believe I'm explaining this to you. Fine, we were near Kazumi's mother, Lizzie's been cranky all day and she left. It's probably, it's probably because you are too timing Kazumi and in front of a parent. How many times do I need have to explain things to him? Bull, we're not going out and Lizzie's been nothing but pain in the ass. Did I hear something? Probably because you are... Uh, I knew it. <laughs> I was like, it's, it's Lizzie. We're, we're kind of talking behind her back, is she gonna... I see Lizzie burst from behind the doors and run straight into Kosuke. Then me. <laughs> Are those tears? Clutter. She's crying? Ah! She looks like a deer in the headlights as she looks at the floor. Or maybe it's something else. I look to and see, and I see a wooden box smashed to pieces with a few springs sticking out. Her music box, is it? But why was she carrying it? Why she brought it to school? And why was she crying? Running out? Sorry about that. Look, I can buy you another one. Ugh. 
it's not you can't buy her. It's special. It's it's the special things with you. Yeah. Lizzie shudders and becomes strangely calm for a second. Oh, sad music. What is with this change of scene? Like, why was she running out with a music box? Why she bring it to school? Why? Ah, maybe she bought it because it's like a good luck charm or something. But then, why was she running? Why was she crying? Why did she run into me and I broke it? Or they break? Was it already broken? And then she, that's why she's crying. I don't know. She pushes past me and runs down the hallway, leaving Kosuke and I to collect our thoughts. Run after her. Now you made her cry. Me? She ran into me. This isn't worth it. I'm going to see what's going on. I get out the pieces of the music box and head down the hallway. Maybe I can sort this out. Eventually, I run into Kazumi again after having gotten lost. All of these hallways look the same to me. Did you find... Did you find Lizzie? Yeah, but she ran away. Why? She glances at the broken box cradled in my arms and a look of pissed off versus... versus realization crosses your face. Why did you break it? That meant a lot to her. This thing? I didn't break it. I was just standing there. And... Seiji, you get blamed for everything. This thing? Well, I guess it explains your reaction. She ran into me and dropped it while Kosuke and I were talking. Well, you better go apologize. Uh, for what? Uh, I stared at her in disbelief for a second. It's my fault? I know how you feel. I know how you feel. But I did nothing. That's part of the problem. Yeah, I'll show because you've forgotten about the whole promise thingy. I'm about to say something else when she takes deep breath and regains her composure. Look, I've known her for a while. We'll deal with this later and when she's ready. Follow me. We're gonna fix the box. I really don't like where this day's sailing. We walk in silence to the yard for some privacy. At least that's what I assume is going on. Wait here. I set the pieces of the box on the ground and sit next to it. On closer examination, it looks like an old music box. Of course it is. Although, why on earth would Lizzie run off when it broke instead of wanting to get it fixed? Yeah. Something thugs at my memory. Finally gonna remember? I got you something else to drink. My attention is immediately switched back to reality. Thanks. I place it on the ground next to me and the music box. Now, will you tell me what's going on? Kazumi chews her lips and grudgingly gives an explanation. The music box is from someone very important in her life from a long time ago. Alright, but she was already running before it broke. That was probably you. You're having a conversation with Kosuke, right? She was eavesdropping. That's true, but I see no reason to. Did she say something, anything bad about her? Other than she's nothing but annoying, but annoy me? Wait, she's done nothing but annoy me? No. <sighs> Whether or not she did, she still cares about what people say to her, about her. That's rather one-sided. Yep. But that's because she's a Cinderella. You can't, it's, that's how she is. That's how she rolls. What do you really think of her? She needs an attitude adjustment. Lizzie is a nice person, but we just don't seem to get along. Hmm. All the options aren't that great. I mean... Alright, we'll see the first one. Lizzie is a nice person, but we just don't seem to get along. She means well. Maybe after this you could talk to her. I'll consider it. I smile teasingly. Hey, I'm not joking. Of course you won't. Do you, do you want me to run after her right, right now? I wouldn't want you to trip. Ha ha ha. Now that was uncalled for. I try to be serious but I just can't. This is too much fun. What is too much fun? Are you going to drink that? I look at my drink it just as she grabs it right from under my nose. What's going on here? Not again. Go away. Oh wait that's her. Go away. I watch as Kazumi leans back and threatens to launch a full can at Kosuke. Nothing really, just talking. Well, have you found Lizzie? No, we decided to give her some time to pull herself together. Not after today, I'm sure you would. What's that supposed to mean? Just quit being a lecher! I I'm leaving, see you later, CG. What's going on? I don't understand! Why did she suddenly leave? I watch as she walks and I turn to face Kosuke. 
Nice going, Mr. Creeper. Now bite you off. Really? And then he just bites you off. What? Oh, are they leaving me alone? Because this is gonna come up. I walk past him in the general direction of Kazumi. It's hard enough to make friends without people being so mentally impaired. I'll catch up to her after I'm sure that after I'm sure that Kosuke's not around and try to talk to her. I'm at least getting along with her and school would be pretty fun if I can hang around with her. Am I get going into her route? Hmm. Kosuke will probably still be a problem, but if I get on good terms with Lizzie, that won't be a problem. Is this an ending? Ending 6 out of 6. Thanks for playing. No! No! I I didn't even get a good ending. That's just... What? That's just kind of a cliffhanger ending. Hmm. I think the answer is because I tried... I wouldn't say tried to win both of them. I was nice to both of them. Because you see... You should kind of only go for one. Hmm. I'll see what I can do to get a different ending. I'm not satisfied with that. So there are six endings, but... Hmm. I don't know, I don't think I want to do all the endings. I just want to get one good ending that I'm satisfied with, and then I can end it there. Perhaps I'll go for Liz. Yeah, we'll see if we can get Liz. Alright, so I'll see you in a bit. Alright, so I think this is one of the first points where I might have not gone for a route. So, I said sure, which means I end up with her. But I should say no thanks to end up with Liz. Maybe, I think. That's how it normally goes, I would assume. Cause, but in real life, actually in real life I try to make an excuse because I'm lazy, but I would probably say sure because to be nice, you know? But I guess I have to say no thanks to get Liz. So I have somewhere to go. Aw, you sure you can't stay? Nope. I feel bad for just leaving her to do with that, do the work. Well, good luck with it. I'll look forward to the festival tomorrow. Alright. Bye. See you tomorrow. I make it to the station and I am greeted by a violent ghost threats and jabs. Of course. You going to follow me again? Sure, whatever. We step into the train and without a word and sit on opposite sides of the car. Unexpectedly, Liz does not say a word for a while. The train plunges into da the dark again. I pass through this mountain every time I take the train to and from the school, I, but I still haven't gotten used to the claustrophobic feeling. The light at the end of the tunnel reveals again the calm crimson edifice that stands in the distance. The spokes cut through the horizon, connecting the sea and sky. What is with this description? I gaze at the wheel as the shimmering of the sea behind the clo colossus pierces through the crevices of its webs. What is with this description? The world around me shifts back and forth, and my eyelids feel heavy as everything locks me to sleep. Alright. Are we gonna- okay. Seiji, look! What is it? That thing over there. Come on, you see it. You see if- if you actually open your eyes. I think you see it if. Uh, quite a number of spelling mistakes, or grammar mistakes, in this game. I lift myself from the grass yes. I've been laying on, shielding my eyes from the sun. Ugh, the sun. Its position had changed, just how long was I asleep? And she actually waited for me, I feel a bit bad. Hurry up, oh I can't take it anymore. Ah, she jerks me with an unexpected strength tugging me with both hands. And then one as we pick up speed. Where are you taking me? Somewhere, where you can see that better. She's always cheerful and I'm happy being with her. She has a little too much energy though. We pass through a forested, a forested area. Trees, bushes and streaks of light that peek through the overhang of leaves rush past us in a blur as I am blindly led by this girl. I'm not worried. I trust her too much to be worried. My legs feel somewhat sore but I ignore them and focus on the num numbness I feel from smiling. We stop. The sun warms up my face and reflects off of hers with a vivid glow. For a moment, I forget that we are in a city and are instead in some faraway place with no one else. Just the two of us, standing on an unfamiliar ground. Look, Seiji. I turn my head and there it is. A crimson spook wheel. Spook wheel. Connecting the sky and sea. Revolving resolutely. It radiates the light from the golden sun. What is with this description? Pretty. 
I know, right? I've always wanted to get on it, but my parents are too busy to take me. And even if they did, I might be too short anyways. You need to be at a certain height to go on the ferris wheel. Well, I guess you need to be accompanied by someone and a, that's tall enough. An adult. I'll take you. <sighs> you don't want to go alone, right? And they don't have height limits for ferris wheels. Yeah. I'll get the money from my mom and dad and take you there. You really do that? Of course, we're friends. Right, Liz? Oh, so that's the importance of this. I remember it. Seji, Seji. Oh. You're going to miss your stop if you keep sleeping, moron. Ah, sorry. Thanks for waking me up. I didn't do it for you. You troubled the train operators if you stayed. Yeah, I'll sure, surely I'll trouble the train operators you didn't do it for me. One obviously false concern for others. We step off the train and begin to head home. You remembered though. Aren't you gonna... Oh, I see. You just remembered. That's why it's so awkward. You're like, should I tell her? I suddenly remember it. As we walk without a word, a thought crosses my mind. Say, have I met you somewhere before? You're gonna say that? Nope, it must have been someone else. I think I knew someone with your name. It's a common name. I see. Well, maybe I'm wrong after all. Oh god, no. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Just say it. Hey, remember we used to be friends? You shouldn't have said, have I met you somewhere before? We push the area in front of our houses. See you tomorrow. Bye. And exchange our goodbyes. On the way to my apartment, I see a corpse next to a pile of garbage. I decide to... Wow. Are you... Wait. A different choice? What am I gonna do? Safe. Poke it. The dead flesh sinks and rises with little flexibility. He's dead, alright? Who are you calling dead? Oh, he reanimated. What are you doing here? I live here. That's your lie, isn't it? Again with this game. Nope, it's the truth. Right. Want me to call the cops so they can come and fetch you for trespassing? Eek! Fine, I'll believe you. And so, yes, you, what is your story as doing here? I'm glad you asked, you see? You see what? Somehow this supposedly simple answer turned into a narrative. And so after toiling with the beast for the sub-urban streets, the streets of the dragon's lair, chivalrous knight Takasa, Takase Kosuke bravely steps forth. Oh my god, and offers his days to protect to protecting the fair maiden from despair and evil until she is ready to release the feelings hidden deep within the crevices of her heart. That's the most bogus thing I've ever heard. Don't talk to me ever again. Yeah. I should have walked away when I had the chance. Look. And get out of the way. I show off in Messiah as I begin to walk towards my apartment. Wait! Kosuke runs and stands in front of me blocking the way to my apartment. Hear me out, please. I'll leave you alone after that. You'll be forced out if you don't, anyways. With the bottom of my foot as I kick you out. Speak, human. Uh, what? Hold on, I'm thinking. Are you an idiot? Oh wait, no point in asking questions with obvious answers. Forget I said anything. Get out! As I step forward to grab Kosuke by the collar, he steps backwards and throws off his shoes. Before I can react, he runs to my window and draws the curtain slightly. Look. At what? Why is it this time? He pulls out a pair of binoculars and adjusts them after sticking them through the gap in the curtains. Are you peek- Are you peeking at Liz? I knew he was creepy, but this is quite weird. No, that's just straight up stalker. Come over here and look. My hands him he hands me the binoculars and I grab them reluctantly. I'm a little curious right now. I peer through them in the general direction of where he had looked. Oh my, it is! <laughs> I was wondering what is the significance of poking or poking Kosuke or leaving him, but he's straight up stalking! <laughs> and we get a panty shot of it off this. Great! The dishes? Isn't she beautiful? She looks so graceful as she brushes her hair. This is straight up stalker! And why does she close the curtain? I mean, I wouldn't stand in front of an open window in, if I'm in an apartment or any- even in my house, I wouldn't just stand near an open window as I change. Without the curtains or blinds, you know. And, uh, I'm not even gonna question it. Wait, 
how does he know that window connects? Like, can he to her? Like, ah, uh, I don't get it. As she sits by her window, the light of the afternoon sun reflects on her from her radiant, beautifully crafted facial features. Uh, she might have been brushing her hair before, but she's changing now and is about to undress herself. Maybe completely and utterly. <laughs> Cheesy libido filled teenage movies may be somewhat true, but I didn't think girls actually changed by their windows. <laughs> exactly. With the curtains open, no less. Exactly. I think my eyes are digging to the viewfinder as a particular part she catches my eyes. Stripped. I love it when she. Wait, what? Stripped? What? Panties? She's changing? Shit. Gimme. Give me the my, my, bino my binoculars now! Out of the way! Get off me! I rescued the binoculars from him successfully and push him back a few feet. Let me see, let me see, let me see! He jumps at me attempting to take the, his binoculars from me again. Wait! He violently shakes the curtain during this ordeal. Calm down, she'll see us! She's gonna see you guys, isn't she? And then she's gonna be so mad. But you're gonna make up with her and that's the good part. Kosuke takes the binoculars from me and looks out the window with them. What? I can't see anything. Oh, there she is. Why is she carrying a metal bat? Shit. <laughs> Doom! Liz busts open my door and glares at us. The peeping toms as she drags her bat on the ground ready to strike. Well, bye. Oh no, I'm gonna die. This is my death ending. Kosuke makes you run for it. Wham. Ah! And his way to the door, this kicks Kosuke in the air, and the bat meets his torso at lightning speed. He shows outside in a flash of pain. She glares at me and I back up against the wall as my mind starts racing. E you well, Wait, I can explain! <laughs> explain? She jumps at me with a swing. I jump out of it just in time as Liz dents a concrete segment of the wall. Wow. Why is that to explain? You're spying on me, you pervert! Peeping Tom! Sexual harasser! Oh, but you liked it, didn't you? I mean, that's how she's always... Oh, I would assume. Kosuke made me do it. I didn't mean to! Actually, you should say, Kosuke just went and did it and I tried to protect you. Well, he didn't make me keep looking, but yeah, I looked through the binoculars because of him. I'm completely cornered now. Liz hovers the executioner's bat above my head, ready to bash my head into a bowl. Liz, I swear I didn't mean to. Did she stop? Well, how do you intend to compensate for it? Yep, this is the makeup I told you. You're gonna, she's gonna be so mad, but you're gonna make up. She's not gonna kill me. Uh, how do you want me to compensate? Take her to the Ferris wheel. I hate her upcoming request for sure, but um, I'd rather keep my skull intact. Be my minion. What? That doesn't make sense. Tomorrow at the festival, you must do whatever I say. No exceptions. Got it? Well, isn't that a bit? She raises your bat. Perfectly fine! <laughs> You're coming with me at 7am tomorrow. Got it? How early? Ah, don't mean to understand. I'll do it. Liz shuts the door behind her as she leaves. What a nightmare. Huh. The hours pass rather uneventfully as I repair the damage done to my apartment. How can you repair a crack on the concrete wall? So many holes to plug. Oh, you just plug a hole. And how's the owner? I'm, you're renting the apartment, not, you didn't buy it, right? So, I wonder how the um, owner would feel. After finishing that and dinner, I prepare for bed. What a day. Keeping the curtains closed since Liz doesn't seem to find it necessary to find it necessary seems to be a good idea, yeah. Without much delay, I drift off to the world of dreams. Alright. But we'll continue these dreams in the next episode. Yes, I think this is a good place to end it. So leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And follow me on Twitter at DMindGaming if you have enjoyed. And I hope to see you again in the next episode.